Now, here's our reporter, Laura Windsor. Thank you, Chris. A neurointerventional team can include specialists from radiology and neurosurgery with advanced training in diagnosing and treating neurological disorders. At Pomona Valley Hospital Medical Center, Dr. Nasli Janjua tells us what a neurointerventionalist does. I do catheter-based procedures uh, involving the brain, sometimes the spine also. Uh, and these procedures can be acute stroke thrombectomies, trying to open up a blocked cerebral or brain blood vessel, um, also treating aneurysms in the brain, blocking up arteriovenous malformations, which are um, abnormal tangles of blood vessels, which can also sometimes bleed. Prior to this procedure's advent, people would have open brain surgery to clip aneurysms, which is still a viable treatment option, and there are some times when that might be what we recommend. So open surgery would be the treatment for an aneurysm uh, or for an AVM if it was indicated. Now in terms of acute stroke, where somebody comes in and the brain blood vessel has been blocked up, the only other treatment was and is IV TPA, so giving a medicine intravenously through the IV line to try to just have that medicine circulate in the blood vessels and the body system and try to open up the, the blocked blood vessel. In the United States, it's probably only about 5% of people that can even be a candidate for that intravenous medication. A lot of times they just don't arrive in the hospital fast enough. One has to give that medicine within a very, very quick time period. Or they may have had some other problems like a recent surgery or, or some medical history that makes them unsuitable for that medicine. And before interventional techniques were around, and that was pretty much the end of the story, we couldn't offer these people any other, any other treatment option. We pass a catheter from the leg blood vessel up to the neck. We inject some dye and take some x-ray pictures of the blood vessels. Um, then if we see a blocked blood vessel, an occlusion, we'll take an even smaller catheter, go right to the site of the blockage, and either try to suck out the clot or we have devices that will try to ensnare the clot to be removed. Um, that's how we do a stroke procedure. Aneurysms, a little bit different, but the same concept getting up to the aneurysm. And in the case of aneurysms, we have these tiny coils that are placed inside the aneurysm and they block it up. I remember a case, there was a pregnant woman who had a stroke. And because she was pregnant, they couldn't give her the tissue plasminogen and activated that clot-busting medicine. So we did the procedure on her and as soon as we were done with the procedure, she was still on our procedure table. She started recovering movement on her left side and you know, obviously that was really rewarding to see. The baby was fine as well. These devices are approved up to eight hours, so that's what we say is our stroke code window, but obviously the sooner the better. We had a patient in the hospital who'd come in with a heart attack, and they did a procedure to open up the coronary artery um, and treated his heart attack, and he was actually doing very well. So about two days later, he was just about to be discharged to go home, and he developed an acute stroke. Uh, and he was still in the ICU waiting for his discharge papers. Nurse found him with uh, inability to talk and uh, not moving his right side. And now that the interventional treatments were available in this hospital, we were able to take him down to the radiology lab where we do these procedures and uh, open up the brain blood vessel. He's doing very well. He was discharged and he actually left about two days later after the stroke. He recovered uh, pretty much all of his uh, movement on the right side and largely all his ability to speak and understand. For patients, the benefits of neurointerventional surgery include smaller incisions, faster recovery, and less pain than traditional surgery. Remember, time is of the essence when having a stroke, so seek medical attention immediately. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.